Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Austin from awfulmedia.com and I have a video today that I've been meaning to do for like two weeks now, but <laughs> uh, sickness and uh, not had time to do anything like that except uh, sleep because I have been completely miserable. But what we're going to do today is look at turning a navigation menu like this, it's using an unordered list with list items, into a drop down select menu like this. Uh, once the browser reaches a certain point. Once it gets like right there, we would turn that into that. We're going to be doing this all manually using a media query, and we're just going to be hiding a duplicate list of these uh, list items here. Now you could use JavaScript and just uh, grab the values from these and place them in here uh, as you please, but for the simplicity of this tutorial, we're just going to use a duplicate list. So you will have to manage two lists, but if you're using something like WordPress, it wouldn't be too difficult to do. I'm also using a little bit of JavaScript here to uh, use the values of these options for our URL links. So we wrapped it in a form tag with the name of small nav and wrapped it in a select tag with the name of nav links. So you can see here, small nav, boom, and nav links right there just for so you can know how to do that type of stuff right there. So what we're going to do first is actually hide this menu in our CSS. So we're going to make the display none. So in our CSS, see there's nothing going on. It, it is a uh, fluid layout. So the columns and stuff will size with the browser, but that's nothing new. You can download this template at alphamedia.com slash blah, blah, blah. And uh, download it there. You can have all these different uh, layouts you can play around with. So pick that up if you want to play around with a responsive website. Also have a responsive template inside of this pack here. Yeah, responsive two column. And all that does is it's fluid until a certain point, then it becomes a one column website. So check that out. Mm -hmm. So back to what we were doing. What I'm going to do is come down here and below the navigation link styles. I'm going to say select uh, display. I can't see what I'm doing. Display <laughs> none. So it gets rid of that menu there. And I am still completely congested. I, I can't breathe. So uh, I'm not sure if there's going to be any video left after I edit out all the coughs and sniffles. But we'll see how it goes. Blah. So. What I'm going to do next is set up a media query. Why can I not scroll below that? Is there nothing there? Oh, okay. Sure. And then I'm going to say uh, at media screen and inside that we're going to say max width, maybe uh, like 800 pixels or something. I don't really know. And then we're going to Add our little brackets for our styles. And then inside this, I'm going to say select display. That is not how you do that at all, by the way. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, select display. Wow, I have typed recently, though. <laughs> display inline block. So now once we get down to a certain point, that should pop up. Oops. That should pop up once we get right there. Yeah, but it needs to pop up before that. It needs to pop up right there, right there. So how can we find out what our browser size is? Now there are uh, plugins and add-ons for browsers, but what I do just for quickly uh, deciding what a browser size is, I go to browsersize.com and then click on what's my browser size, and it's 971 by 598. So we're going to take the 971 and use that for our max width. So I'm going to say 970 because I have a couple pixels to play with there. Come here and refresh, and I don't have any pixels to play with there apparently. So it needs to pop up actually right there. So if we refresh that, 969. But we can do it before that. It would be better to do it before it just so we're safe. So we'll leave it at 970. And then what we have to do is hide the navigation uh, UL and LIs. 
So we can say nav li display wow none and come back and refresh so boom boom and that is that <laughs> that was a lot easier and quicker than you expected i'm sure then we can add some styles to the select menu we're not really going to style it we're just going to move it off the top a wee bit margin top like 35 pixels or that's 25 pixels so that worked margin right 15 pixels just get it out of the corner a wee bit and you can style that to match your website's design. But that is as simple as it can be, isn't it? So this is just one way to do a responsive navigation menu. There are different ways to do it. And I do plan on going over those because I really enjoy uh, this type of work. It's really fun to do. There's a large selection of routes to take. And this is just one of them, one of the very simple routes to take. I would like to look into actually just restyling the menu as you go down, like once you get down to a certain point, uh, play around with the size of the font, play around with the size of the margins and paddings. And then once you get down to a point where you don't have room for that anymore, play around with the uh, alignment of the links, like stack them differently, make them into a grid type layout maybe, make them completely vertical. All of that I do plan on doing. So stick around for that. Do subscribe for more responsive website design tutorials. I have done one in the past and it was it's one of my most popular videos and I say most popular I mean like over 200 views so uh, do check that out it's on using media queries and how you can use them to achieve different things just like with this layout right here get down to right there it turns into a single column layout pretty cool right sure yeah okay so I will see you tomorrow I hope if I do not die between uh, now and then see you next time